Good evening, everyone. How are you all doing? Good. Well, it is already past 530, so I'm already breaking one of my first rules to start on time, so I apologize. Uh, thank you all for coming out. I know some may be a little difficult to get here at 530, but I do appreciate you all. Everything that you all are going to see, that little QR code, moms and dads, if you don't know how to use it, your student does, just scan that, okay, and you will have access to everything. It is important that you scan that, all right, because I'm not passing these out, all right? We're just, we're just not doing it. We're trying to go uh, less and less paper, obviously. There are some linkable things in there that your child will want to fill out tonight, okay? So we'll go ahead. Congratulations, right? I mean, everyone that is here, you got the invite. I know there might be some people that are sitting there on that waiting list, but I will say this today, okay? I accepted the 100th student this afternoon, okay? So we are at our limit of 100. Now, what does that mean if you are sitting in this room right now saying, but I'm on the, I want to be on the waiting list? That's perfectly fine, okay? There will be spots that open up. There's no doubt in my mind because some students in here might be still waiting on a Gatton application or a craft application. Some people move. Some people change their mind. I mean, it's, there's a lot of things that happen. And so if you are waiting and still trying to take tests that I say you continue to pursue, because there are still chances, okay? So, uh, but we, I knew that we would probably reach it. Uh, I'll be honest, I, I thought that we would. We had 195 applications for this program this year. It's the most we've ever had, okay? Um, there's no doubt that each year we will increase. I see a lot of uh, family faces in here, so that you've probably been through this once before with, with a child and now you're doing it again and maybe even some people um, a, a third time. I, I, I hope that I will be a, a third parent of this in a year or so. Uh, but it is, it is a great opportunity and I am glad that you and your student are ready to take this adventure, all right? Because it is, it is, it is fun, it is stressful, it is a lot of work, but it is, it will pay off, okay? It is, it is something that I think um, all of our students that have come before and have went through this, um, I have yet to hear a single student say that they regretted doing it. So, um, but there's different reasons why people choose to come here. And honestly, it, it doesn't matter to me what your reason as a student was to come as long as it was your reason, okay? I said this in some of our parent meetings before that if, if parent, you're dragging your kid to come to this, then we're gonna have some talks probably later on because there's probably going to be some issues down the road. Uh, it's, you know, don't, you shouldn't have to drag your kid to this. They should be dragging you in a sense. But I want to make sure again that you get this QR code. Um, I know that Miss Wright uh, had some copies for some notes out there. That is the exact same QR code. So if you took that, then you'll, you'll have it with you. That is fantastic. And I know that there are a lot of events going on. So some, we just have parents here, uh, some just students. This will be recorded, it is being recorded, and we will share this out for everybody. Uh, your first call of action, okay, that you see on here is to, to join this Remind, okay, it's down here at the very bottom. There's a specific Remind group for Central, one for John and one for North. Please be sure that you join it. Parent, at least one parent needs to join, and then obviously the student needs to join. I know there's been some parents like, can you email me? And I get it, I, I want to, but I haven't. I've only emailed what was been put on our application. But if you join this Remind list, you will now get all information that your child gets. Okay? Uh, so please make sure that you join this. But there are some things that will start to take place really quick. One of the first things that has to happen, okay, is that your student must apply to be a student at ECTC for the summer of 2024. Okay? That application is open and available now. Right, Kelly? It's, it's, they can apply now. They have a rolling app, uh, application process. So that can be something that you and your child uh, take care of tonight if you wanted to. You have to have your social and a date of birth that's going to ask for all that important stuff. But you have to apply for the summer of, uh, of 2024 at ECTC. That's the first thing. After you apply, it's going to tell you, send your ACT scores, send your transcripts, all that good stuff. You can ignore that. We take care of all of it for you. 
Okay, we will do that process. We won't do it one day when you go off to your four year college, but we'll do it now. So you can ignore that part. And then like I said, join the Remind groups. It's important also when you join Remind that uh, you qualify yourself as student or parent, okay? Um, because we send specific messages sometimes just to the student, sometimes we send messages just to the parent. So uh, in your profile, make sure that you set who you are in that, and that it has also your first name and your last name. Um, for some reason, sometimes on Remind, it does do some weird things, like if, if you have a new phone number and it belonged to somebody else, sometimes there's some weird things that pop up as name. So see if you check your profile on that to keep us intact, all right? Now I wanna talk about what it looks like for the next year, and then obviously into your senior year. We will plan your student's schedule for them, okay, for the fall semester. We basically will take care of that. We ask a couple of questions. There will be, you'll see later on, there will be a, a Google form that will pop out. Um, and we ask some questions, but other than that, we will pick their schedule for them, okay? So we don't, we, we won't need a whole lot of input. And then once we do that, we don't share that out with everyone, okay? Because, I'll be honest, I don't need students and asking, well, my buddy's taking English at 9 a.m. and I'm in 1030, can I take it at 9 a.m.? No, we're not doing it, okay? We're not making those changes, okay? We want you to get to know other people. So there are, we are very specific in how we try to do things and try to group some students. To, to make some other acquaintances, okay? So that process, we're, we're not going to uh, adjust. So um, don't, don't ask, you'll get your schedule on the first day of school, next school year, okay? So uh, don't, don't worry about that. Um, in the sequence of classes, everyone will take the same courses, just maybe not happen at the same time, right? So everyone will take English 101 during their junior year, English 102 is your senior year. There is a little caveat to that, and, and we'll get into it a little bit more, that some students may be able to take both of those during their junior year, but for the majority, they'll do 101 their junior year, 102 their senior year. Math-wise, everyone starts off with college algebra unless you've already had it. There are some students that come to us with MAT 150 college algebra because you did it, you're so advanced in math, you took it as a sophomore. We have some, right? I know, I, I know we do. So we'll, we'll put you in the next math course. You have to take English and math every school year. It's just, that's the bottom line. Um, and so you'll take 150, uh, most of you, and then you'll get to choose what math class you take your senior year. We do have some students to take uh, more than just math 150. And again, there's a questionnaire that we ask them and some kids get to make that decision. Everyone takes public speaking, that's COM 181, okay? Some people might have a fear of standing up in front of others and giving a speech. But well, we're going to get over that fear pretty quick, okay? That is a class that everyone takes. It is almost every degree path requires it. It is a, an essential skill, I'll be honest. It is something that companies are looking for, and so we're going to try to hone in on that skill. So everyone will take COM 181. Your heritage class is History 109. If you were not in this program and you stayed at your home high school and they have dual credit history, that would be the same class that you would take at your home high school. We offer it. It's History 109. Okay, it's U.S. history. You gotta have it high school, junior year anyway. It's part of the course, so you take that. Then down at the bottom, you'll see it kind of fits kind of the screens. Social behavioral, we take two classes, Psych 110, and then World Politics 235. The World Politics also takes place of it, not takes the place, but uh, doubles as a cultural competency class. Okay, the, everyone has a competency class for graduation, so we're taking care of that for you in those two classes. Humanities, humanities, uh, HUM 120 is our humanities course. Now, we are also offering English 161, and this is where it kind of gets a little fuzzy. English 161, though, it sounds like English, and we can count it for high school English, okay? It is a humanities course in college. So, if you love literature, and you have already taken arts and humanities in high school, you could choose to do English 161 for your college humanities credit, okay? Well, that's kind of a little confusing, but that's new. That is gonna be new for 
uh, next school year. We haven't done that in the past, but um, we can teach that class here in person, so we'll be doing that. Now, science class, this is where the choice comes in. This is where the choice. Students will get to choose the science course that they want for their junior year. Everyone has to take science their junior year. My hope is that you're picking a science class that matches potentially with what your career path might be. And I'll kind of go in order and I'm going to give you my take on them as well. So the first one is Bio 112, which is the class. 113 is the lab. That means there's two separate grades. You'll get a grade for the lecture and you'll get a grade for the lab. This is biology on steroids. It's like your high school biology class that a lot of you are taking right now. Right? A lot of you are in biology. Okay? Just imagine now that you're taking AP biology. Anybody in AP biology this year? Yeah, those of you all that are in AP biology, you are right now basically doing this if you can pass the test. Right? That's the rule for AP. But you won't get that credit. That is also the rule for AP. Okay? So if that is your cup of tea, there's that course. I, I say this a lot of times. These first two courses, this is chemistry, okay? And this is probably the equivalent of uh, honors integrated science. If I remember integrated science, if you took as a freshman probably, that's probably what this is like, all right? These two courses right here, these are for students that say, I have to take science? Okay, I'll take it and they pick one of those. That's kind of how I would decide on who takes those classes. Okay? You really, I got it, yeah, you pick, pick one. Okay? Those two courses, academically, are very easy. They're on the easy side. They do require work. They're gonna require you to think. There's, I mean, but they're on the easy side when it comes to college science courses. The next one is Chemistry 140-145, all right? Now, how many people have taken chemistry in high school? Anybody in chemistry? A couple of you, all right? So if you're already in chemistry in high school right now, and you think it's hard, this is not the class for you. If you're taking chemistry in high school right now, and you think it's, eh, I can handle it, you can handle this class. This class is the next step up. But what I will tell you is, if you think you need chemistry in college, that is chemistry 170, 175, that's like college level chemistry. I don't, again, what degree path you're choosing to go after, you have to have that first. You have to have that first. Okay? And again, for most, you know, we only saw a couple of hands pop up, for most of you then, this would then be your first attempt at chemistry. And you would be fine. Okay? You would be okay. But you got to take that before you would ever jump into the next level of chemistry. Make sense? The next one you see is Bio 135, and this is anatomy. This is anatomy. We teach anatomy here. We, we work with ECTC. The professor comes over. Our health science instructors, it runs out of our health sciences program. That course for Bio 135 is class, lecture, and lab together. It's one grade. It's still four credit hours, and I didn't talk about credit hours, so I apologize. But that is still four credit hours, but we teach it in person, and that's taught on a trimester basis. Okay? So the way that we do that means that that class, if you take it, will be in the afternoon here at EC3, and it will be all trimester, Monday through Friday, 12 weeks. It's different than the other courses that we're offering in the, in the program. So just understand that one's a little different. But the national failure rate for anatomy in college is 50%. Half the kids fail anatomy in college. Not that one. The next one. So that's why we do this one. We're trying to eliminate the failures. And we've had a great success. Our students that successfully take Bio 135, this anatomy course, go on to regular anatomy, and more so are passing. Now, not everyone, don't, don't get me wrong, it's still very tough, okay? But that's why we do that course, all right? So, that's all the classes I think that I have, right? All right, so just to make sure that everyone understands, we're gonna pick the courses for you, but you get to tell me the science course, 
All right, and if you end up with anatomy, that's going to be fourth and fifth period here at EC3 under the direction of a health science instructor. So as you can imagine, a lot of our students in the health science program take that. It, it counts for the pathway course as well. So that's, it's kind of nice in that. The other courses, all those other things that we've talked about, if you all can remember from my conversations in earlier academy meetings, remember that your students will take those courses on a college schedule. So let's, let's just take one example. Let's say your English class is on Monday, Wednesdays at 9 a.m. On Tuesdays and Thursdays at 9 a.m., you probably have a different class. And then at 9 a.m., that class goes till 10, 15, that class is over. You have another class that will start at 10, 30. So let's just say for fun that on Monday at 9 a.m., you have English. At 10, 30, you have History. That's your day. Okay, that class ends at 11.45, and then it's lunchtime for you. You have lunch, you have a time to kind of decompress from your lectures and maybe a test or the things that you're doing in class, and you have lunch, and then you have part of your, in a sense, I, I like to do this because our central art students always look for this. It's kind of like your power hour, you know? Not in the fact that we don't know what you're doing all, all the time. We know what you're doing, right? But we're, you don't necessarily have to report to this class. or this. It's your, it's your time to, to eat lunch, take care of homework, and those types of things. So, and then at 12.45, 12.40 actually, rings and students load the buses that are here at EC3 and then are, even our academy kids that are planning to go back to their home high school for fourth and fifth period. So I know some of you will be interested in doing so because you have band, ROTC, choir, maybe you're wanting to take an elective, your foreign language still, all kinds of different reasons, right? We want you to be able to do those types of things and you have the option then to go back for fourth and fifth period. But the majority of your academy classes will all happen in the morning. If you end up staying this trimester because you have anatomy, that's fine. Maybe you go back to your home high school for fourth and fifth for trimester two and trimester three, that's okay. We work all kinds of schedules out. But I just wanna make sure that everyone understands that your schedule operates on a college basis from fall, which is the first of August, in a sense, August 19th here, to December 15th, that you're in your fall classes. Now I think if I have the calendar right, I think Hardin County Schools gets out like the 21st or something like that maybe in December. So then we have a week. This is this has changed just a little bit slightly. ECTC's calendar has changed a little bit with us. So we used to have two weeks. So now we only have like a week. And we, we use that week with our students. A lot of times they get to do some job shadowing, some internship opportunity. They get to go out in the community, do some service-based projects. They're not just sitting around. They're going to have some opportunity to do some things um, until then Hardin County School is out. All right. I know it's a lot of information kind of thrown out there, but I, I want to point out a couple of other things that you see here in these dates. The courses that we have here in person, where it's one of our teachers, like for instance, Mr. Ernst is back here, is our English teacher. He teaches, those are all 16 week courses, okay, from August 19th to December 15th. That's how that course will run. And then our professors that come over to teach public speaking and psychology and world politics and so forth, they're teaching as well from August 19th to December 15th. But every once in a while, students will be sprinkled in some courses that might be eight weeks. And thus we have the eight week schedule, the first eight weeks, August 19th, to October 13th, or the second eight weeks, October 21st to December 15th. We will be offering some other additional eight week courses here uh, that we're building in some of the courses that our students enjoy taking some of it that they need to take for the degree program like a personal finance and a digital literacy CIT 105 will be taught in an eight-week sequence taught here in person so we're, we're doing some of those things I will obviously make note you all see here fall break I think Hardin County Schools and ECTC were synced for about a year I think we had one year of the same fall break and I don't I don't know what happened and now now we're not Okay, so Hardin County Schools, October 7th through the 11th, 
ECTC is the 14th through the 20th. We are not matched anymore. However, for all of you parents who are like, what, what do we do? We like to take a trip during fall break. When, when ECTC is closed, your students will not have class anywhere on their campus, okay? Now, all of your students will take classes on our campus majority of the time. There, every once in a while, they might have a science class that we'll have to shift and work, but within the majority of it, they're on our campus, so they will follow the Hardin County School calendar for their junior year, okay? So you do not need to worry about next year for your students. What you'll need to worry about is senior year. That's obviously when things change. Your student now is taking a majority of their courses on campus at ECTC, and they need to follow the ECTC calendar. So if Hardin County Schools is out during that fall break, and your student, that's finals week for that first eight weeks, they gotta make sure they're showing up or they're gonna miss a final, and you can't recover from missing a final. So just gotta understand there are some of those little caveats within it. Obviously in a perfect world, they will always match up, but we'll never match up on a spring break. College takes their spring break when it's still snowing outside. So, I mean, we're, we're never doing that. We're always going to be in April. They're going to be in March. Um, and we'll, we'll show that. But you got to understand, 16-week courses are traditional, but ECTC has started this eight-week course sequence, and it's been kind of nice for students to get variety in their schedule. Okay? Uh, but those are some important dates uh, to remember for the fall. Here's the spring dates. We already have them. Hardin County Schools will come back in January. Let me, let me back up real quick. Sorry, I'm just going to go back real quick. Um, August 19th is the very first day of classes for their college classes, okay? But Hardin County Schools, on the very first day of Hardin County Schools, your students must report. They have to report on the first day of Hardin County Schools, okay? And we will have activities for them in the academy as we get ready for August 19th, okay? So we will have a little bit of a front end of things, but it's good for us. They do a lot of get to know you activities and they do some team building and a lot of, again, we're bringing kids, 100 kids from three different schools together that don't know each other. And now you look at this group and they're all best friends. They all, I mean, they, they've made great friends from three different schools that they had no clue who others were. But we do a lot of stuff on the front end before classes start. So just make sure that if you're trying to think, oh, we get an extended time for vacation, you do not. They have to show up on their very first day of schools for Hardin County. So now we're going to the spring. It's the exact same thing with that in January. They have to return on the very first day that we are back from winter break in January. Their classes won't start till January 13th, but they must return on the first day. And I apologize, I don't have all of those calendars memorized. I'm just trying to get to Friday right now. So uh, just, but these are the dates for the spring, and we will always have those dates out. And as you can notice, again, spring break, March 31st for April 4th for Hardin County, and then ECTC is in March. So um, just understand, we're never gonna match up spring breaks whatsoever, okay? Go next one. I'm gonna, we're gonna open up at least one of these, Mr. Coomer, let's, let's open up one of these. This is, and I'm just gonna show one, obviously when you get the link that you can, oh, we're not gonna show that one. Let's go back to the other one. Don't, don't make a liar out of me here. Let's see if we can get something to work. Scroll down, let's see what this one. Uh, keep going, there should be something where it starts showing classes. Uh, click on that link then. Okay, here we go, go, go to the next gen ed. Okay, so in, in any of our, our degrees that we're doing, your students will work to either the Associates of Arts or Associates of Science. Now. Don't get those two mixed up in thinking that, well, my, kid doesn't, my kid's gonna be an artist. No, that's not what the Associates of Arts means, okay? It's just, it, those, are, those are degrees that focus more on the arts, whereas Associates of Science are degrees that focus more on the sciences. The only difference in those two, a student in Associates of Arts will have the opportunity for more social behavioral, heritage, humanities, that they're taking more courses in that realm, six more hours. Whereas a student in the Associates of Science has more quantitative reasoning, which is math, or natural science courses. That's it, that's the only difference. We do have a lot of students that pursue both. They get both Associates degrees, and you can do it, it is very achievable. 
those students end up just taking six more hours than other students. And again, they just figure out which one it is. These don't necessarily match up with a bachelor's of science or a bachelor's of arts, okay? And there's, I don't, I don't know, I can't figure this out why they call one a bachelor's of science or bachelor's of arts because if you look up like a psychology degree, you'll see a bachelor's of science and a bachelor's of arts in psychology. You can get either one. I don't know why, but they, they have those options. And I, and again, it's just, I, I'm not taking the time, I guess, to figure that part out, but dig in if you, if you like. When you look at this, there are 60 hours. That's what our students are going after, 60 hours. We are doing our best with your student for them to take 15 hours on average each semester. 15, 15, 15, and 15, they get 60. Now, understand, we do not guarantee that anyone earns an associate's degree in this program. No guarantee whatsoever. That is on your student to get. What we will guarantee your student does is they will take at least 12 hours each semester. Okay, we don't even force them into taking the 15. They get a choice in that. They must take 12. We do that. Now we will help them and find out schedule. I have some kids that end up taking more, but they won't let them take more than 19 either. So there's a minimum and then there's a maximum within that. But if your student takes 12 every semester, are they gonna get an associates? No, it just doesn't math, right? You, don't, you can't get there. Now, understand our, our, all of our, uh, our students will take FYE this summer. So they're gonna walk in with three. How many students already have dual credit in their back pocket? Several of you, right? There's gotta be more hands than that. You, got, you, got already, you already do. So then when you already have credits in your back pocket, then that helps you when we're scheduling. Then, so you might be, no reason for it, I'm gonna take 12. Okay, now the, obviously we get to a point, like in your senior year, you're like, I took all these extra credit, dual credits, I only need nine hours my last semester of my senior year. Sorry, you still gotta take 12. We have to keep you in full-time status, okay? I don't, I don't, uh, uh, I love talking to Ms. Morgan, but I don't need her calling me to find out why a student's not full-time. So 12 hours is the minimum, okay? That's why we sometimes get students that get both degrees, because they're like, well, I gotta take a class anyway, so they end up with both. It's just two pieces of paper. They can hang in two matching frames, okay? I, I will fix that uh, Associates of Science link. I apologize, but you're gonna see those. Only, only difference is, again, uh, the, the natural science or quantitative reasoning. Um, Let's, let's do the first thing. Let me, let's talk about this real quick. Course syllabus, grades, and grade checks. Your course syllabus is a contract between your professor and your student. It is a contract on how you will earn the grade for that class. You might pull up that syllabus and the, and the professor says, you need 10,000 points to get an A. And 9,000 come from the final paper. I don't know, I'm just making some craziness up, right? You need to understand that, so guess what? If you don't do the final paper, you failed. It's very simple, right? But whatever that syllabus says is the contract between your student and the teacher, and it is important that your student understands that syllabus. They understand the due dates that are on there. They understand that if the teacher says it's due at 11.59 p.m., on Eastern Standard Time and they go stay with a friend in Bowling Green that it's still due at 1159 Eastern Standard Time and it turns off otherwise, okay? Because they are gone on beta trip or something, right? I mean, this happens. These are, these are things that our students have experienced. They still have to be responsible for that and if it's due, it's due. There's nothing else that you can do about that, right? Unless you have a conversation with a professor on the front of it. But that syllabus is important. And it's a, in our students who have read and studied their syllabus have used it to defend themselves to a professor. And then the professor's like, yep, you're right. And it's worked in their favor. We will help them navigate that or you as a parent can help them navigate it. All right, and we want them to be able to figure out these types of things. There are gonna be some nights that someone might cry because something didn't work out. But it's better for you, for you and your student that that happens now while they're still living in your house and they're not off at college 400 miles away, right? That's why we do this program. Grades, 
this is, this is the biggest thing I, I think everyone needs to understand about these grades. All of these grades that your student gets are permanent on their permanent college record. If they get an A, that's fantastic. It's there forever. If they get an F, that's not good. But in college, you can retake courses and replace grades. Okay, not that we like to do that, but we've had on occasion some students do it. But you gotta understand that those grades are big and it will start with this summer class. So we've got to start off right. Now, in the aspect of what grades are, your students will continue to earn keys money. Everyone's familiar with keys money, right? The, the, the formula that they put out there back in 1997 or whatever this was, and they haven't given any more dollars to it. All right, that's a political soapbox there a little bit. But the grades that your kids earn in classes will earn them money still for keys. The good thing about how our system is set up if your student earns a B in their college class, for keys money, it's worth an A. Okay? Not that anybody wants a bunch of Bs, but if you got straight Bs and you have a 3.0, it will be a 3.0. Make sure you understand that. But for keys money, it looks like a 4.0. Understand that? We don't, you don't get a 4.0. Just for keys money, they give you the full dollar amount. Okay, you still get that 3.0 that ends up on your high school transcript and your rank probably drops because all of you are such great students. Understand that that happens. But when we do with the grades, they report to us A, B, C, D, or an E is the F, is the failing grade. They report those grades to us. So when we get those grades, we take them and we put them on your high school transcript. If you earn an A, all dual credit across our district does the exact same policy. If you earn an A, you get an A 100 on your transcript. So we don't need to know that you really got an 89, but the professor loved you and they bumped you to an A. That doesn't matter to us. They recorded an A. And we give you an A 100 on your transcript. B, 91. C, 82, and so on. Okay, so understand, but that's how we record those grades. If your professor says that's what you get, they record it, that's, that's where it is. You should always be aware, based off of your syllabus, where you stand. You say, I calculated my grade, I got, a, I got an A. Professor reported a B. That's a conversation, that's an email, right? Or a face-to-face -face conversation at office hours. Now, we are very tuned in with your students on grades. Okay, but we want you tuned in as well. And so we changed up our policy a little bit and, and we found it to be useful. This helps engage conversations at home. Your students' grades are no longer gonna be shown in Infinite Campus. How many parents like to look at grades in Infinite Campus? Yeah, I know, so does my wife. Okay, I don't, I don't care. I'm not looking at them, all right. But Infinite Campus is not tied to your students' dual credit college classes at ECTC, okay? You will not see those grades in Infinite Campus anymore, okay? So this is then where some maybe kids like cheer and they get excited or whatever. If you're doing great, you're doing great, right? There's nothing to hide. If you're not doing well, they try to hide. So students will have to show parents and they will log in, they'll pull up their blackboard, where that's the learning management system, and they're gonna show you, oh, for my psychology class, look, I, look, here it is, matches up, I, I have an A, this is where my grade is, and then you're gonna record the grade and you know, mark full semester and so on, and then put all the grades in here, and then the student turns it in, there's a signature, and it gets turned in. So we did this and changed it up to help parents and students stay on the same page on where they stood with grades, okay, and then now the only thing we have to do is chase students down to turn them in. But we'll take care of that and we're doing great checks and we're doing some of that stuff anyway. But we started that, it's been useful, it's been, it's been nice for parents to be able to do that. Now I've had phone calls from a parent and it says, my, my kid won't show me their grades. And I'm, listen, I, you know, my parenting style is, it is what it is, but I then say, who's in charge? Tell your, I mean, your, 
you're telling me your kid won't show you their grades? Come on in. And I'll sit down. We'll open up the laptop and I'll say, show up your parent your grade. I mean, we've had those conversations in our office, but I don't have a problem with you or the parent, right? You're paying for them. Show, tell them to show your grades. I, I don't, you, don't get a, you don't get the opportunity to not. I had, I've already had two kids come through this, and we did it. Show me your grades. They better be good. You tell me you're passing them all, prove it. Show me. And it takes five minutes. Honestly, that's all it takes. But this is a useful conversation to have with your kid. You need to be in tune. And then we get these, and then when I see bad grades, then I call you. And I just say, hey, just checking in. I know that you saw this, you know, yep, I saw it. You know, hopefully it's not the conversation of, I didn't sign that, right? We've had those conversations too. So just, I send a remind out and I said, it's grade check time. Grade check time will be all next week, turn them in by Friday. So easy conversation at home on Monday at dinner is, let's do those grade checks, okay? so. Uh, you all avoid, you've been checked in with, as parents this whole time, so just, just stay, stay in, right? Still got two more years with them. Stay in with them. Don't, don't let them check you out. But we do grade checks like that. That is part of it. Go back one more. Mr. Coomer, sorry. All right, let me talk about the FYE class, the summer class. This is, people have talked about this. You probably have heard about it. This FYE summer class will start June 3rd. June 3rd. We get out the 24th. They get a week, and then they start the class. Okay, FYE stands for first year experience. First year experience course, it's a great class. Okay, it is foundational. It helps the student to understand and use the learning management system, Blackboard. It teaches the students how to be a good note taker. It teaches the students communication skills on how they send an email to their professor. It does a lot of these different things for the student. Okay, it is required for the associate's degree from the college. Unfortunately, the price of that class is a little more than what you're going to be paying for the other dual credits, okay? Dr. Pate, president of ECTC, has agreed, and that tuition might slightly change by a couple of dollars, so I apologize. We, we just did find out about a tuition change, so it might be 501 or something like that. But um, it, the, that price is, is what it is. Dr. Pate had reduced the price by a third. So it's still an, a conversation that I have back and forth with Council Post-Secondary Education on why this one is not reduced to 50%, but it is not for some reason. And I wish I had a better answer, but maybe I'll have some good news before the end of the school year. But for right now, that's where we stand. That is the cost of the class. You will need to have it paid by July. Okay, that doesn't need to be something that you have to pay up front, but by July-ish or something like that, you can kind of mark that in your calendar. Now, because of where we stand with our 100 and the potential that we have for the waiting list, if your student doesn't complete the very beginning of this course as a syllabus quiz, they don't do it, they get administratively withdrawn. They're out of the academy. There's first. Second, they earn a D. They're out of the academy. They fail, they're out of the academy. So some students on the waiting list will be cheering for your demise. Now, 98% of our students earn A's. Okay, and then there are a few that earn B's and then some that earn less. I'll be honest, you shouldn't even get a C in this class but I'm not kicking you out for a C. A C transfers. A C sticks on your transcript. D's and F's do not. But because of where we stand with our numbers, a D or an F or a never start, you will be out of the academy. Okay? So mark your calendar for June 3rd. Happy days, right? This class is 100% online. 100% online. Anybody taking a family vacation this summer? Is there Wi-Fi? Of course there is. I don't, you can't go anywhere without Wi-Fi these days, right? So all you need is access, and you can take a laptop and you can sit down. Or 
you can plan in advance and say, I'm going to be gone this week, so I'm going to work ahead and then not have anything to worry about while I'm on vacation. That's what I would do. The class will open and you will have access to it and you'll be able to do those types of things and work ahead. We will have another conversation during that uh, when we're off. You know, we end school on the 24th, so we got that week. We will have a conversation during that week. Our ECTC professors for that course will come over. We'll have students. One parent can come with them if they'd like, but students need to come. And we're going to log in, and they're going to introduce you to the FYE class. They're going to show. They're going to walk you through it. That will probably take 30 minutes. And so we'll have some sessions during that week. We'll plan for. We'll probably have some daytime sessions and some after evening sessions as well. Okay. So we'll try to help with that. All right. So let me just kind of talk through this, and I've got a couple different things on this, and just make sure that you understand the differences between high school and college, and you know, some of the things we all know within personal freedoms. We allow a lot of personal freedoms within this program. We know that everyone has to go to high school. They're, that's it, right? You know, they structure your time. They tell you when to go from one class to the next and so on. Teachers remind you of your responsibilities over and over. In this set setting, you get to choose if you want to go or not. It's voluntary, right? College is voluntary. You sign up, you pay tuition, you go. You get to decide when you take classes. For the most part, now we're going to help you with a lot of this in the front end, but then after even your junior year, you get to structure your, a lot of your time. You have to balance your responsibilities. You have a lot of kids that work jobs, go to school, it's fine. You've got to balance it. You've got to be able to handle all of this stuff within the personal freedom. Here at EC3, we're going to force you, you got to go to classes. There's no choice. You're here in the building, you go to classes, right? You get to structure some of your free time, though. I'm not going to stand over top of you and say, don't, don't you need to be studying right now? You should take advantage of that. Now, there are some kids that I go, I go and I tap on the shoulder and say, are you ready for that math test tomorrow? We, we do you know, keep our pulse on them. And then we obviously will aid in reminding of those responsibilities. But our goal is that we want to think about this is college with our hand on your shoulder. Okay, we're going to help guide you through the process and then during your senior year, it's like I can still see you, so this is college with I can still see you and I can pull you back in if we need to and that's what we do with our seniors. So it's still a, a, a setting in which our students are successful. We average a 3.75 GPA for our students in the academy program during their junior year during the junior year. The senior year, it goes to about a 3.5 or so. There's a little bit of a drop. Why do you think that is? Your senioritis, right? A little more personal responsibility and freedom that sometimes trickles in or I forgot things. Those, those happen. Senior year happens a little bit more like that. It happens with a lot of students. And again, you're taking on the most challenging course load, whereas some of your friends at high school aren't necessarily doing that. Some are. But a lot of them aren't. So you're taking it on. You're choosing to take this program. You got to be responsible. All right. College professors, you know, versus high school teachers. You know, your high school teachers, they review your homework with you. They talk about it. They remind you about, hey, you didn't turn that in. You know, can you get that, t t you know, turned into me? They come maybe see you. They think that you need help. You look like you're struggling. You know, hey, come see me right before class. I'll talk to you for a second. Our high school teachers, our teachers now, they've gone through formal training through a teacher education program, right? They, they do all these types of things and they help you catch up when you're absent. Hey, you were absent yesterday. Yeah, let me give you this stuff, okay? That all happens in a traditional high school teacher setting, right? Your college teacher, your college teacher, you know, they may not always do that. They may not find out, did you do the homework that was assigned? They just expect it to be done. If you didn't turn something in that's incomplete, they're not necessarily worried about it. They're not asking you, hey, do you need help? They're waiting for you to come and approach them. They are approachable. They're waiting for you to uh, schedule an office hour meeting. They have not been trained as educators. They are experts in their field because of their master's degrees in these areas, but they're not trained necessarily as educators in that formal setting. Doesn't mean they're not good teachers, they're just not necessarily trained that way. Right? They're going to expect that you find out what you miss and maybe talk to a couple classmates or find out if someone will take notes for you because you know you're going to be out. 
They're not going to say, hey, I got notes for you. Just come see me after. It doesn't happen. There's just a difference between your college professor and your high school teacher. Obviously, like Mr. Ernst and our math teacher, they, they, they'll meet you halfway, but they're still going to expect a lot from you. So you've got to step up to what they're expecting. Your grades in high school, remember, you get a lot of grades for just, you know, you assign that work, you get a grade for it. Sometimes we're not always doing that in, in our college classes. Good homework grades may raise your overall grade. I have, you know, my homework grade is, I don't know, it's probably crazy, 40% of my overall grade. It's probably not that in high school, but, you know, a lot of times someone says, just because I do well in my homework, then I'm going to do well in the class. Doesn't always happen. Extra credit, man, some teachers pass it out like Kit Kats and Snickers bars. I mean, it's just giving left and right, man. Everyone's getting extra credit. Doesn't always happen. Test grades at the start of the semester may not affect your final grade. In your college classes, you may walk in and find out that there's only three grades for the class. Go ahead and click to the next one. All right, three grades in a class. And it may, you may find out that it's exam one, exam two, and a final. Exam one is 20%, exam two is 20%, and the final grade is 60. That could be your college class. Very different, okay? You may have work to do, and it may that that work doesn't necessarily count for anything. A grade on a test, a paper, they might be overwhelmingly worth more than some of your homework. Extra credit, almost unheard of. Okay, because that means the teacher has to take time to grade something extra for you. Doesn't always happen. Okay, your initial test is probably that first one to say, hey, this is how it's going to go. Now you know how my tests are. Sometimes it's a wake-up call for students to say, oh, I better actually start reading the text. You know, because a lot of times we know students don't always read a lot of things. So understand that there is a difference. You need to know what an A is. Right? You need to know what a B is. Sometimes you can walk in and again on that syllabus, it'll say to get an A, you need 850 points. And this is how you get it. So students will say, once I get that 850, I got an A, I'm good. You'll probably almost stop. Again, that syllabus is that contract. You need to know what it takes to get the grade that you're seeking. Okay? A little different. Textbooks in this, this course or in this program, we cover all physical textbooks. If there is a physical textbook that you will receive that is mandatory for a class, we will make sure that you get it. All right? If it is a digital textbook, online access, we do not pay for those. The district cannot recover that, so that is a cost that goes on top of the tuition. I'm going to make sure that you all understand where we're coming from on those types of things. Technology-wise, we have laptops and Chromebooks, and we can issue, just like your student has access to one at your home high school, we make sure that you can still have that as well. So we work with our home high schools. We can get you those. We do have access to uh, laptops and Chromebooks here that students can check out. They take them home with them. They use them on a daily basis, just like you've been uh, using for the last few years. So technology-wise, you're good. However, Students, if you are able to talk your parents into buying you a new MacBook, go for it. Give your best speech on it, right? But parents understand your student does not require one to do this program, okay? You want to make them buy their own, then by all means, go for it, right? Tuition costs, like I said a minute ago, the tuition cost just went up $3 for total credit hours. We are now at $94.50 per credit hour, and that's how your student is going to be charged. Typical courses are three hours. English 101, I mentioned that course, that's a three credit hour class, so that course will cost you $94.50 per each credit hour of that course. And that is how you are billed in a community and technical college, per credit hour, okay, not by classes. The science courses and stuff that I was mentioning earlier, separate classes that were class and lab, three hours for the class, one hour for the lab. Build separately, two different grades that you will be charged. The, the district, um, sorry, the state created this plan that our students would pay 50% of the rate. So it's a phenomenal rate. It's great. But the normal rate is $189 per credit hour. So right now, anybody who walks out, uh, adult, you want to say, hey, I want to take classes at ECTC, they're going to charge you $189 per credit hour for every class that you take over there. That's the rate. 
right now. You can go to Jefferson County Community Technical, ECTC. That's, that's the lowest rate that you're going to get. Okay? It is a whole lot more if you go to WKU. Think about our four-year institutions. Okay? Just understand your uh, tremendous savings there. We have a couple different things. Understand that I will make sure that this information is available to you when it comes time to pay. But you can play, pay online. You can go to the business office in person. You can even pay on the phone. I will tell you when it is time to pay. If you pay early, that is your fault. You will receive things in your student's email that says, hey, it's time to pay. It's due March whatever. It's not. It's not ready. Okay. I've got uh, Miss Kelly Schoonover. She's back here in the back. Raise your hand, Kelly. So Kelly's our, our, our dual credit uh, director over here at ECTC. She's got two of her members of her team, Ashley and Liz. They are our wonderful advisors that work with all of our students. They have to get in every student's account and they must hand touch and alter the bill to reflect the tuition cost. So if you get a bill and it's $3,000 and you log in and you pay it, I'm not gonna tell you your money is all gone, but they will refund you eventually, okay? But you just overpaid. So this is the one time in your life that you can ignore a bill until I tell you it's time to pay. All right, store the money away, do the math in your head about what it's gonna cost because that tuition will be what I told you on top of any maybe a digital content fees that are there, so just make sure you understand that. But don't pay early. Now, State of Kentucky continues to do some good things. So talking about Keys Money a little bit ago, from the same organization that Keys Money comes from, that organization is called KIA, Kentucky Higher Education Assistance Authority, that they are giving your student two free classes, and we're still good right now until I hear anything different from the legislators, right? They're giving two free classes for your junior year and two free classes for your senior year. Now, they say free classes, not credit hours. So we help your student making sure that they decide if I'm going to use the free, where do I use them? Well, when your student has to take a science class that has a lab, that's four credit hours. Versus English 101 being three, where do we use the, the tuition savings? On the four credit hour, right? We help your student establish that. They have to get into Kia and they have to go into Kia and say, I want to use it in the fall. On the, and they, they won't say the class yet, unfortunately, but we establish all of that. So they just say when they want to use it based on the semester in which they're taking the course. Okay, we help to remind them to make sure they set it. But they get two during their junior year, two during their senior year. Now on top of that, Kia has something called work ready. Now work ready is another term and you know it's kind of synonymous in our terminology with career and technical. So if your student is taking a career and technical course, your student gets two of those a year. Freshman year, sophomore year, junior year, senior year. How many students are in here took like medical terminology here at EC3? Anybody? I know there's a couple. You got that free through this. It's a three college credit hour class. You got it as a work ready eligible course. So, there are courses that your student will have to take in this program, some of them already have, like Digital Literacy, CIT 105, and Personal Finance, BAS 120. Those are two courses they have to take. Those two courses are free. Okay? Some of your students will go on to take other courses like maybe they want to do engineering. We have engineering courses here. Maybe they want to do culinary, or maybe they're continuing the health science. There are several courses in that that continue to fall under <clears throat> this career and technical work ready scholarship. So we want to make sure that we utilize those, we capitalize on what the state is going to give us, and we're going to get those courses free as well. Okay? The other great news. Our district has committed to helping our students break down barriers. So if a student is eligible for free or reduced lunch, due to income, then students will be eligible. They have to apply. There is a form that they have to do with the, with the school district. That's one. And then there's a Google form that they have to fill out for me telling, saying, make sure I'm on that list. And then we verify. 
and then our district covers the cost. Students are required to maintain a 3.0 GPA to be eligible, but that's for all of our kids in the program anyway. So again, now we send out a remind. We will ask our students to, to fill that out. Parents, you're going to be on the remind as well, so you're going to see it. Anybody can fill it out, but you've got to fill it out. Students that are eligible right now as a sophomore and in good standing, obviously, academically, will have their FYE class paid for. But there will be a form that gets filled out. You have to fill that out. And then there'll be a new one that'll go up for the fall, and then that fall one will take care of all next year for junior year, for fall and spring semester. Got to maintain that 3.0 though, okay? I, have, I had a student and a parent that forgot to fill it out. They came to me this month, actually two students, and they forgot. They just, like, I forgot to do it. Okay? They can, they're eligible for spring tuition, not for fall. Okay? It's just, you gotta, you gotta, you gotta meet deadlines. It's just part of it. Attendance. Attendance is a big deal. Okay? And with our students in this program right now, we're going to continue to watch your attendance for the remainder of the school year. If we have anybody that pops up on an attendance issue, we may be making a phone call. Okay? We can't have students not showing up for school. All right? So we got to be in school. So attendance could be a way that you get released from the program. We have some students that are on the edge right now as high school juniors from being released to come back their senior year because of their attendance. Their grades are fine. Their attendance is horrible. So it is something, obviously, we're going to have less visualization on them as a senior because they're going to be on campus. And if I'm not sure they're coming to class or not, I, I, I just don't need that headache. Okay? So attendance is a major deal. We're going to continue to watch it. All of you all are fine right now, so just, just maintain and do what you're doing. FERPA, okay, I know that a lot of you have heard of this, the, the, the educational rights. Your student, as a dual credit student taking classes with ECTC, will be treated like a regular college student when it comes to FERPA. You as a parent will not gain access to their records or their account unless your student gives you permission. And there is something very simple to do. I will show you all when we have that night for FYE or that daytime, how to click a button, and then your student puts in like a passcode, figure out whatever it is. It could be like, you know, your maiden name or whatever. It could be whatever. And that passcode is then asked by when you call campus, they'll ask for it, you give it to them, and then they could talk to you. But at the same time, parents, this is your opportunity to practice giving some of that freedom to your kid and you helping them with some stuff and like coaching them up on like, hey, I need you to make this phone call and find out what's going on with your bill. It could also be like, hey, I know your grade wasn't great. Let me help you formulate this email to your professor. Don't you type it for them. Don't you type and send from your own personal account to a professor. Please don't embarrass your, your child that way. Help them, though, to do it. Because if you send an email to the professor, you're going to get an email back if you get one that says, kindly, we are not discussing your student. Please have your student reach out, if you even get one. Okay? Or if you make a phone call over there, even though you're like, hey, I just want to pay the bill, they're going to be like, oh, we need, we need this information. So we want to make sure that we take care of that. So there is access. We'll help your student to grant you that access, and then everything will be good. Okay. Here at EC3, we continue that your student will be a normal student. We serve breakfast, we serve lunch, everything is here. We serve breakfast until 8.50, and then we serve lunch until noon. So your students here on campus as a high school junior shouldn't have an issue with that whatsoever. It's next year as a senior, the next year as a senior, that if they want to continue to do that, they need to be here on those during that time to receive it. We have a lot of seniors that pop in now, and they'll come in and grab lunch, hang out for a little bit, and then they leave. Lunch is still free. So as long as our district continues to give free breakfast and lunch, then you know, I'd say students take advantage of it. You know, pop in and grab something real quick, figure out what days they have your favorite food at least or something, and, and come eat. So, uh, but we still continue to do that. Transportation. Buses will roll every single day that we have school from the home high school to here. 
So your student just needs to get to the home high school on a daily basis by riding their, bu their bus, you dropping them off there, maybe they ride in a car, I don't know. But they get to the, their home high school and then they'll be dropped off here. They can be dropped off here immediately at EC3, except for the first day of school. We're going to make sure we show up to home high school first, and then after that, every single day, they can come straight here. They can drive here once they have that permission. They have their driver's license. We have a driver's form they fill out. They can drive here. So this is just like any other campus. We want your students to be here, so transportation is provided. We do not provide transportation back and forth to ECTC. Okay? We do have a path that's cut out that a lot of our students walk. Today, a day like today, it's beautiful. Some of our kids walking back and forth to campus. They go over to the library. They go over for the Success Hub. They're doing some of those things on campus, and they walk back over. We're, just, we're not providing transportation to them. The, our, there's, those that drive can drive over. Our study areas. We have study areas throughout this building. We are expecting our students to be in those study rooms during their afternoon block. So if they're choosing not to go back to their home high school for fourth and fifth, they do not have a class here at EC3 during fourth and fifth, they will go to a study room for fourth and fifth. Now, we do have some of our classes that operate in the afternoon. Mr. Ernst does teach some afternoon classes. Our math teacher will have some math sections in the afternoon. And so some of our kids switch it up and say, hey, I'd rather take a, a morning block open, and then I'll take my math class in the afternoon because it's, that's the way my schedule works out. We work some of those things out, uh, and, and we'll help them do that. We will pick some of those for those kids in the fall obviously since they don't get a whole lot of choice in that okay but study areas are mandatory for them to go to it's how we ensure uh, better grades all right this link right here we'll go ahead and click on this link mr coomer this is active in this qr code that you all are in this is the first thing that we're going to be asking students the very first step in doing so before you can fill this out is that you have to apply for summer of 2024 and so as you try to fill this out if you don't apply say that you've applied for summer of 2024 it's going to kick you back Okay, so you've got to answer that question yes when you've done it and you have a KCTSS ID number and then it'll take you through the rest of the process of this application. So um, filling that out, you know, just kind of jump in there real quick. It takes you to the next thing and it's going to ask for your ID number. This information that you're sharing with us, we share with ECTC so they can start enrolling your kids in those classes. We have to get this process started quickly. So Anybody that can attend to this this week would be fantastic. Obviously, we'll probably send out some messages and tell people thank you for who's done it and all that good stuff, but a couple things. There are some questions on here. We will ask students to tell us if they're going to be math focused, English language arts focused, or neither. Now, the reason we're doing that is for a student that says that they're math focused, they might take more math classes during their junior year, and we need to make sure that they're in math in the fall. If they're telling us they're more English language arts, then we need to make sure they're in English 101 in the fall. That's really all that does for them, okay? So that, it's not that major of a decision for a lot of people, you know, but we do try to balance schedules. And uh, like for instance, taking your science course and math at the same time sometimes becomes a little heavy for students. So we try to, you know, put those opposite of each other. There are, there are some strategies in that. This next question talks about FYE or, or this next thing that I didn't even talk about, which was APEX, because my hope is that everyone takes FYE because that's how you earn your associate's degree. But if you are sitting in here saying, I don't want it, I don't want my associate's degree. We have student, I, have a, I have a student graduating this year. She chose not to do her associate's degree. She had a reason. I don't know. But so she did a course this summer on an APEX, it's an online learning software, and that is a college and career readiness course. And she did that instead. She'll get high school credit for it, but not a college credit. And that, obviously, that is free. But if you don't do FYE, you can't earn your associates. Okay? So understand that we do have an alternative for those that are wishing not to. And the next question just asks if you're planning to take home high school courses or courses here at EC3 next year. So I put some examples up there. But if you're, there's something that sits out there for you, just list it. Okay, I'd rather you give me more information than not enough. And then we're just looking for extracurricular, anything that you're in, so that we can kind of help track that. I know that a lot of you put that on your application, but that's been a little while, right? Some of you have potentially changed, maybe picked up a new sport, maybe stopped playing something. I don't know. So we're just looking for some, some recent information on that. So if you can fill that out. Again, that is active and ready now. This next one is still, it's not necessarily 
uh, for a lot of you in here, but for some of you that are still trying to take care of alternative assessments through ECTC, there's the information that if you're still trying to get on the, the wait list now to make yourself into the program, then those are still open and available and our wait list will still be in order by who meets the criteria first, okay? So that is that information on there. I know that, that the bottom is kind of old news as well for a lot of students. So, and then what else we got? The benchmarks for the ACT, again, that's old news for a lot of you. The AccuPlacer test, again, these are things for students that are still trying to get benchmarks. Just some resources for you. I think I've given those before. And then contact information if you don't know how to get a hold of us yet. What questions do you have? I know there was a lot of information. Obviously, I did all the talking. So what questions do you have? I don't want to keep everybody. Um, we can, I can cut it off and at least the recording can be done. Yes. Yes, go, go back to the scheduling form. Yeah, it says scheduling for next year. Yeah, go, yeah, go to the back, the very one, first one. So right there in that blue link here, okay. that is the ECTC application. When you go to do it, it will start off, the first thing it says is give me an email address. So again, student email address, they'll, it'll it send them a code and then they can start the process for applying. When they're all done, they'll get a KCTCS ID number. It's very important they get that ID number. If they don't get an ID number, and so they get like a reference number, something happened. Okay, we want the ID number. Okay. Yeah, and make sure when you apply that you say you're a high school student and you've never been to college. Okay, because um, that sometimes that tricks some people up. Yes. Yeah, Kelly, the question being asked, they already have a KCTSS ID number. We still want them to do the application, correct? We do. So that has been a little bit of some of our trouble in the past. It kind of gets caught up. We want to make sure that they're saying, I'm ready to take classes in the summer. And so kind of changing some processes and procedures with the college, so we're asking them to do it again. It should still assign them that same number that they had because it's going to match up their social. But it is important that they're saying, I want to take classes in the summer of 2024. Great question. Yes? I, I know that you take uh, the dual credit classes that have been completed into account. Uh, what about the AP classes where they have a high score? Absolutely. Yeah, our students, we will ask them once they get AP scores to send us that PDF printout of those AP scores. All AP classes qualify for something, right? And when we get that, we send that to our dual credit team. They will make sure that those get on their transcript. Obviously, those will count towards the number of hours they need in their associate's degree. So absolutely. But it is if you never turn them in, we never get them. So they have to be, sir. Uh, the email address, is that a personal email address or their high school email address? Either one, just whatever they get access to. Again, this is just for that application process. Any other questions? None? What is it? Six, five, third, what time is it? Right. Stick, around. Stick around if you've got questions. All right, I think we, we, did, we did pretty good on time, right? So 640, not bad. Stick around if you have questions. Thank you all for coming.